Well, the book is out today and Caitlin Jenner joins me now from New York. Caitlin, it's so good to see you. And this book, it's poignant, it's funny, it's sad, but above <laughs> all, it's incredibly honest. Well, thank you. You know what? Um, it's funny you say it's, it's funny. It's, it, it is extraordinarily <laughs> honest, the book. Um, but, and I work with uh, my good buddy, Buzz Bissinger, and the two of us spent two years uh, talking, writing thousands of pages of memoirs. And I told Buzz, I said, Buzz, we have to show humor in this book. Yeah. Uh, it, it can't be all serious and sad and tragedy and all that kind of stuff. There's also, you know, kind of the funny side. I mean, if you think of it, it just the idea of, you know, Bruce Jenner, mm -hmm. this great athlete, had to deal with these issues all his life that in itself is funny. I mean, so let's keep the humor in it. No, exactly. And that works incredibly well. And you talked about Bruce and he was the golden boy in the 70s. He really was. So much so that Bruce was up for the part of Superman, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, the, all through the book, I try to go about this journey and about what I went through. I mean, starting all the way, it's not like you wake up someday and then all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm trans, you know. Um, this is a process that you have from, from when you're little. And, I mean, I found my mother, snuck into my mother's closets, did all those types of things. So in the book, I try to talk about this long journey and all the things that uh, I had to go through, you know. So it was quite a process. It's very... Um, therapeutic for yourself when you sit there for two years and kind of dissect every mm. portion of your life and what you went through. It's, it's actually a very good feeling because there's nothing better than life than living with no secrets whatsoever. Open, honest with yourself. Exactly. And of course, that was, you know, when you were living as Bruce, that was the thing. There were so many secrets. And you must have sometimes been worried, for example, when you did dress up as a woman and you, you went out before you transitioned and you went out and you must have been worried that you would get found out. You know, you had all of that, that pain and that torment. Oh, boy. I, um, yeah, I mean, I basically snuck around all my life. <laughs> Um, my family didn't really know what was going on, my, my kids. Um, um, and the good news is I never got really caught. I came close a couple of times, but never got caught. I got pretty good at it, you know, where I could get dressed up as Caitlin and just, and I never would talk to anybody because, of course, my voice would give me away. Mm -hmm. And, but I would just kind of walk around while I was on the road or I'd go drive somewhere or do something just to be able to feel what it's like to be my authentic self. But it was always very frustrating because I had to come up immediately back, um, you know, get dressed and go play Bruce. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was a long process. It, it was, and you talk about that very movingly in the book. Um, you obviously were thinking about transitioning, I believe, before you met Chris, but the two of you met and you fell in love and you got married. But she knew, didn't she? She knew. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, the process went this way. I, through the 80s, um, I struggled. It was like six years in there, which I go over extensively in the book. Mm. It was probably the worst years of my life. I basically stayed in my house for six years. I never felt like I fit in anywhere. Uh, I didn't belong anywhere. Um, I didn't feel worthy. But I also started to get into therapy you know, I'm doing hormones, electrolysis, trying to do something, because I thought I was going to transition before I'm 40. I don't want to be an old girl. I want to be, you know, at least, you know, before 40. And um, I got to 39 and just could not go any further. And I just, it wasn't, as I say, it wasn't time. Hmm. And so, you know, I thought maybe I should get back into life. And boy, about three or four months later, I met Chris. Uh, I was open with her. Now, did I... Um, uh, downplay it some, I, I'm sure I did. I, I tried to, because I had gone through hell for six years and I was seriously trying, I loved her, and I was seriously trying to um, make something of my life. And she had all these kids, uh, I had kids, we could blend this family together, the whole thing worked. But uh, yeah, of course she was aware of it, but 
I thought, and she thought, hey, we can deal with this. It's not that big a deal. And how is your relationship with, uh, with her now, with Chris now, and your kids? Has that started to heal and started to mend? Have you got a good relationship with them now? Yeah, my relationship with all my kids. Now, here's what you struggle with. Um, my relationship is good. I mean, but this is what you struggle with. I raised 10 children uh, to be strong, to be independent. Uh, to be good business people. Uh, we've done the shows, you know, for 10, 11 years now. Um, uh, they've all taken that and been very entrepreneurial about it and build businesses. Um, and that's what I raised my kids to do, to go out into the big, bad world and make it. Now that's happened. They're out in the big, <laughs> bad world and making, making it. And from a parent's standpoint, you know, it's like, they don't call two or three times a day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have their actually they have their lives. So you always wonder inside, is it because, wait a second, is it the reason they don't call as much as they used to because of what I've been through and transitioning and all that kind of stuff? And then you got to or is it just that they're so busy? Um, they're working. They have lives. Uh, they have kids. They have they've moved on. So, you know, you always struggle with that. But overall, I've been very blessed. I have wonderful children. Um, I have now, I had my 11th grandchild the other day, so the family still continues to grow. No, they do indeed, they do. Now, when you did transition and you did that amazing front cover of Vanity Fair and it was Call Me Caitlin, how did you feel looking at that image and seeing that front cover? It must have been amazing. Well, it was such a long struggle. Um, I, I felt it more... Uh, I, two things. When I was doing the photo shoot with Andy Leibovitz, at one point we were in the garage because we had to be very stealthy about this. Mm -hmm. Nobody could know that she was even there. So we took the garage and they made a studio out of it. And she says, put the mirror behind her so I can see. I had this wonderful black off-the-shoulder gown on. And so she puts the mirror behind me and it was kind of shocking. There I was in the lights with this wonderful gown and the first time in my life I ever had hair and makeup. And um, I looked in the mirror and I said, oh, my God, that's me. Mm -hmm. There I am. It's like the first time in your life you're actually looking at yourself. I go, wow, that is heavy. Cut to the cover. Now, I didn't pick the cover. Um, Vanity Fair did. But, yes, I did take that picture, okay? <laughs> to me, it was a lot of fun taking that picture. Because always, you know, all girls want to feel good about themselves mm -hmm. and kind of hot and sexy. So um, it came out. Now, the reaction from my kids, the Jenner side, uh, was, oh, my God, that's, you know, don't go down that route. Uh, it's a little too hot and sexy. It's a kind of a bustier kind of thing. And, and, and I said, you know what, I get it. But from my standpoint, um, I had been hiding for 65 years. Um, this was that woman that has lived inside of me all of my life. Um, I actually really loved it just because of the shock value of it. It changed. When that picture came out and, and the pictures inside were so well done that that changed everything. Diane Sawyer changed the narrative when mm. I did it two months earlier. Two months later, nobody really knew, didn't know my name, never seen me, never cross-dressed, never, none of that. When that picture came out, it kind of shocked the world. Actually, it won cover of the year for every magazine throughout the world for 2015. That's how important it was. But to see that image on the front and everybody changed the narrative. They kind of like threw Bruce out the door. My God, this Caitlyn character is so much more interesting, you know? Yeah, that's true. And so, yeah. So uh, for me, I, I like the, the shock mm. value of it. Obviously, you become a spokeswoman for the LGBT community. Um, and, I mean, very active with that. You actually particularly want to talk to young people who are going through some tough times. I, you know what? The bottom line is, when it comes to that, um, I, I, I'm fine. I am... My experience and uh, my transition is so different than 99% of trans women. We have a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties, people who don't understand the issue. We have a terrible murder rate. Um, in fact, this year already, <clears throat> in fact, just last week, uh, the ninth murder of a trans woman 
here in the United States since the start of the year. Eight of them are trans women of color and one is a Native American. Uh, we have a suicide rate that is totally out of control, uh, primarily trans youth. Um, we've got housing issues. We've got equality issues. We even have bathroom issues. Um, and so, yes, politically, we have a lot of things we have to do to get equality. So um, that's my mission. Um, I have been very criticized for being more on the, you know, the Republican conservative side, which I am. I believe in limited government. I believe in the people of this country, not the government of this country. Um, and so I got a lot of criticism for like, how can you do that? I get it. The Republicans are not as good with LGBT issues um, than the Democrats are. But the economy, everything else around that, I, I, I kind of lean towards the Republicans. And I'd rather help the Republicans do a better job when it comes to all LGBT issues and equality for all Americans. So I'd rather be on the inside working to try to help them and modernize um, that party. So, um, yes, I try to do a lot of things because I'm fine. But it's mostly about the youth, the kids, uh, parents struggling with a child who's struggling with their identity. Um, that's where I like to spend my time. You know, last year I had Mac. Uh, I did a, a lipstick line with them. And thanks to everybody out there, we uh, raised uh, $1.3 million. And wow. we gave it out to trans issues around, uh, around the world, actually. And, um, you know, this year I started my own foundation. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. I mean... Of the L, the G, the B, and the T, the T is by far the most underfunded portion of it. So you're doing your bit, and I'm sure that Donald Trump, if he's going to listen to anyone, you would like to think he would listen to you. I have talked to him one time while he was on the campaign trail before, and then I ran into him at the uh, inauguration, and all he wanted to do was play golf, and I said, okay, and you know, I can handle that, but... Um, uh, he seemed to be very good when it came to LGBT issues. I mean, he mentioned it at the convention uh, to a thunderous applause. I think the Republican Party really needs to modernize itself when it comes to LGBT issues. Um, and he was actually very supportive. Uh, there was this uh, young lady named Jenna Telekova in 2012 who was in the Canada Miss Universe pageant. Um, and he supported her as a trans woman. Uh, competing in the pageant. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, and he was really very much supportive of her. And he's been pretty supportive of the LGBT community. But he gets into office, and a lot of the people around him um, are very anti-LGBT. Um, he did what I thought was a terrible mistake. Uh, there's uh, uh, President Obama had an executive order on Title IX, which is here in the United States equality uh, for... Uh, uh, it started out as equality for women in sports and then since has expanded into other areas of equality, primarily for students. Um, and it was actually, from our standpoint, a, a good move. And, you know, three months into his uh, presidency, uh, what does he do? He repeals it. Now, why? I do not know. I just, it like baffles me. Why would he do that? I talked to people who were in the room and, you know, Jeff Sessions, our attorney general, uh, was the one that's very anti-LGBT and not going to be good for our community um, uh, and kind of got talked into. The bottom line is he signed it. So he's he's responsible. And I was just terribly disappointed. Mm. So uh, I think I need to talk to him. I think yes. you do. And I hope he would listen yes. to you. That's for sure. I really do. Now, you're obviously really sporty. Of course you are. And one thing in the book I was really interested in, your golf has improved. You've said. I love it. Yeah, your golf, I, your golf has improved. <laughs> I, yes, I, I love golf. Actually, my golf game is very good right now. Thank I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I love playing golf. You know, the good thing is, People say, oh, my God, would you ever, you know, first of all, there was like these rumors in the tabloids, a lot of it coming from over across the pond. Honestly, honestly. Oh, my God, who would ever think of it? Yes. But anyway, um, uh, that I was detransitioning, I couldn't take it. This, are you kidding me? 
I love being where I'm at in life. I've never been in a better place in life. I'm happy. I wake up in the morning. Life is good, you know? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I can still do all the things that I used to do. I mean, um, I've always flown airplanes. I still fly airplanes. Uh, I race cars for many, many years. I do some racing once in a while now, just mostly for fun because yeah. my sons love doing it. And we do some long races. In fact, a couple of months ago, we had a race, a three-hour endurance race, and uh, my son and I, we won it, and we do some off-road racing. Uh, we do fun stuff, and I can still do all those yeah, things. Yeah, of course Plus, you can. look really good doing it. You do. <laughs> you look really good doing it. Caitlin, yeah, you... <laughs> I look really good doing it and just be comfortable with myself, I know. you know? Well, you look so it's happy. It's just so simple. Yeah, you do look really happy. Have you got somebody special in your life? Do you think you'll ever fall in love again? You know what? That's not high on my priority list right now. You know, I'm not like, uh, and so many trans women who especially transition when they're very young, um, they want relationships. They want a, a family. They want a normal life. Uh, my life hasn't been that normal, but I already did all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I've already, uh, you know, been married. I have all my children. My life revolves around all my kids and my grandkids. Mm -hmm. That's what my life revolves around. Um, and so as far as dating and bringing somebody in, I, I, I don't even know. It's, uh, you know, if I could find somebody to have who would have fun with me, I, you know, I would look into something like that. But it's not a priority, a high priority on my list. Uh, my priority right now is my family. Caitlin, it's been an absolute joy talking to you. It really has. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning from New York. It's been great. Thank you very much. Really and great. Uh, I'm so excited about the book coming out. Um, I got no more secrets, baby. It's over. <laughs> They're all in here. They're all in here, Caitlin. The Secrets of My yes. Life by Caitlin Jenner. It's out now. Thank you so, so much. A joy to talk to you. I hope I get a chance Thank to talk you. to you again. Thank you very, very much.